<laughs> I am Maureen Grudzinski of Dimensions of the Supernatural and also a little witchy. I'm here with my great co-host, Anthony Simonelli, otherwise known as... Yeah, let's forget about it. How you doing tonight? I see lots of people coming in with us, and that is fantastic since we are at a, a different time. We're here at 5 o'clock. This is a definite special. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Ron. We have a fantastic a uh, guest with us and we cannot wait to see him. Also, we need to get yeah. him in and get him out because he only has an hour with us. He is a special guest. This is Daryl Marston. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, so, people are confused. We are confused as well. Yeah. <laughs> this is We're using 730 us. on Thursday night, so it's oh, different than us. My apologies, guys. I have a crazy yeah. schedule and Thursday, I mean, I think you guys try to get me I'm actually traveling to West Virginia tomorrow nice. night for um, the uh, the uh, Appalachian Paracon. So, Ooh, well, okay. we're happy to have you, and we love having live guests because we get to have some chatter in the comment section, and they love to ask questions. So, thanks for being with us. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Yeah, this is awesome. What? So, where do we start, Anthony? All right. I mean. We will. I'm going to just hit you with the questions right away because you know we usually kid around, but eh, no time now. But I mean, I see that you started um, the paranormal. You grew up in a haunted house. Uh, yeah, I did, but I was like at the time I was only five or six years old. And we lived there, um, mm -hmm. and I don't remember any of it. I just remember the stories my parents and my grandparents. Mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. My actually first paranormal experience was in 2005 when, I mean, I've, I'm sure I've had little things here and there, but oh, yeah. where I actually saw an apparition, that's what got me started to where I'm at right now. Um, I was actually invested, I was invited to a Halloween event at Fort Delaware, um, which, I mean, everyone knows Fort Delaware. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I didn't know what to expect. It was in, back in 2005, paranormal was kind of still taboo. Yeah, uh, right. So, I went to this thing, you know, not knowing what I was getting myself into, and I was very lucky the first time I ever been on any kind of investigation or tour or anything, I saw an apparition, and tr and I thought I was going crazy at the time, like, I didn't tell anybody, I'm like, there's no way I saw this thing, um, and I just knew that night when I left there that some way, somehow, I was going to follow up on this and try to recreate it and figure it out. And um, that's it. Just led me to this road I'm on now. That's that's awesome. I, I, I mean, I've seen that. Like I said, I like I told you earlier, I was trolling you, so I could get a little bit of information. You know, I knew yeah. some stuff about you, but you know, I like to get a little more. Yeah. Um, I, I seen that you wrote a book on the horrors of Willis. The House of Wills. The House of Wills. I'm sorry. House of Wills. 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 Yeah. Like, something about there yeah. almost broke you or something did, did you have yeah that? yeah um you... that was back in 2014 um i was i had started a team a couple years before that and most mm -hmm. of my team was out of uh like the cleveland area of ohio mm -hmm. uh, we kind of like split up we were you know we were i was here in delaware and they were up there and we would kind of meet up and they kept telling me about this place called the house of wills i've never heard of it um mm -hmm. didn't know anything about it and um, so, you know, long story short, I about a month later, I was there. And um, I never at that, I mean, I'd been investigating at that point about 10 years, and I never experienced anything like I've ex experienced at the House of Wills until this day. I mean, uh, the it was it was the one location that actually followed me home after the really? investigation. Yeah. Um, played havoc on my life for about five to six weeks um and so i was able to you know kind of move move ahead and get get away from it and um it uh it changed me and you know i talked in for 10 years i talked about it on radio shows on on in people magazine all these different mag places they always ask me what my craziest place was it was always the house of wills and i always have people ask me to write a book about it you should write a book about it and finally when COVID hit I had a little bit of time. I sat down one night and I just started writing and it just all kind of rehashed itself and I put it on paper and then I started shopping it around to different publishing mm -hmm. companies and they picked it up, you know, well and uh, worldwide picked it up and here I am now. It was released last September, um, doing very well and uh, very excited about it. Where can people get it? 
Uh, it's in bookstores anywhere. Actually, you can go Amazon. You can go Barnes and Noble. Books a million. Okay. Um, any bookstore has it. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's. I know I have stories too in the past too. I, I, I you can make encyclopedias of all the experiences that we right. get. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But then once you once you get one experience that sticks in your head like that. Yeah. You yeah. Know, Especially that, if it follows you home. You don't expect that. Mm-hmm. You know add that to that point um and something that was very dark i don't use the word demon um that's not my thing i'm not you know that's not my yeah i just i don't understand that but um i know where it was wasn't good and uh yeah so yeah so i wrote a book about it yep it's uh it's got a lot of cool it's actually uh it's labeled horror um horror paranormal because there's a there's a lot of occult stuff in there that happened at that location and things of that nature yes Oh, wow, and that that location was that in Ohio? You said or Cleveland? Yeah, it's in Cleveland, oh, Cleveland. Ohio. Okay. Oh, wow. Is, is that a location that anybody go to? Is just a, was it private? Uh, it's 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 a little tough to get in there at times. Uh, the owner he will only allow certain people in there certain okay. times of the year, um, mm-hmm. just for safety reasons. Um, and uh, he's a great guy, Eric Freeman. Uh, mm-hmm. Look him up. He's uh, he's he he's the owner. He's been the owner for, since like. Uh, 2011 i believe and before okay. that that vacant for about 10 years it was a funeral home before that oh uh, well, that's interesting yeah. so uh, when did you say that you brought something home with you after that and it yeah yeah what, what um, kind of things were happening to you so something attached itself to me something you know and i don't think it was the full monty I just think it was a part of that location that came back with me because we we were all having really bad experiences there. Um, yeah, there was four of us, and um, there had been rumors of that happening way before we were ever there. And um, uh, it was just very uh, like uh, an oppressed feeling. Um, and my kids started seeing things. Um, I started seeing things in the house, hearing things, noticing things that weren't, you know of the norm um and uh yeah and it, i mean it's all in the book um there's so much that happened and you know it, it was such it was a slow burn up to this time you know when mm-hmm. i had that experience yeah yeah terrible. it feels like you're being stalked yeah mm-hmm. yeah and you can't and mm-hmm. the thing is it's not like you can I, I can't it's not like an intruder coming into your house a human where i can pull a gun on him you can't see it you can't fight it um you have to it's ha- it's got to be a spiritual fight at that point point. Yeah. and at that point in, in, as an investigator i think i was a little immature and that's why i brought it home um with me and uh it attached itself you know to m- my personality at that time so yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah you know, sometimes that, you can't help it they just follow you too yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's funny that you said that about you know pulling the gun my husband always says i'll get i'll get them I'll kill them. And I'm like, do you, do you listen to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> um, how, how was it being part of ghost hunters? Like at the peak, what, what was it like yeah. being there? It was, it's, yeah. It's, how'd you get part of that team? Cause I was, uh, I, when I seen that, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I trying to be there. But <laughs> Well, I'll take the first part of the question. Um, being there was it's it's very intense. Um, it's very it's it's very political. Um, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, a lot of uh, cooks in the kitchen, should I say? Yeah, uh, I understand that part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're you you've got you know executive producer, executive producer, assistant producer. You got all these different producers, and then you're in between Lion Gate Films, who was the production company, Pilgrim. And then you got A and E over here, which is Disney, and you're stuck in the middle of them, yeah. and you're getting pulled both ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was it, I, it was a great experience. I loved it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, the people I work with there, the people in the field um, that I work with on the production team is a huge production team. There's like 26 of us. Um, wow. Yeah, you know, we're on a, we're on the road all the time uh, for weeks at a time. We came up, we became a second family basically. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it was uh, it was a great experience. Uh, got to see you know a lot of really cool spots that no one's ever been to. Um, you know, mm-hmm. especially in the in season two when you know we were doing Alaska and places like that, uh, where no one's ever investigated. You know these these locations. Um, as far as getting on there, it was 
it was a complete accident. Um, I had a podcast at the time, the American Ghost Hunter Show, and it it was pretty popular. Um, I'd I'd had it for probably, probably three, maybe four years at that point, and it was it grew, it grew, it grew. Of course, it didn't start out that way. Um, that's where they found me. The producers of Ghost Hunters found me there, and that's how I got on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, that's I, really cool. That's what's cool about being in the shows like that. You get to see locations. Mm. You know that you know you probably won't be able to get in as a as a yeah. private team. Yeah, yeah. and, you and you're not help. just there for one night. We were there. I mean, on average, we we're there about six days. On a long shoot, we were there for about fourteen or fifteen days in one location. Wow, wow. depending yeah. on how big it was. And people don't understand that they think that you know you're there for a night no. or two nights. Like it, mm -hmm. it takes hours and hours and hours to get what you see because it's like you have yeah. to edit it down to 43 minutes yeah yeah, yeah. because I mean, you got you, you, got a work, you got a week's worth of filming that's all edited down to 43 and that and when i say filming you're talking three or four camera guys following everyone around for 16 hours a day filming mm -hmm. everything they're doing every investigation, everything mm -hmm. behind the scenes, and all that gets every night gets sent back to post in L.A. In L.A., they put it together, and they take out what they want, and they build a narrative off of it, a mm -hmm. story. Um, and that's the direction it usually come when it, come, when it would come out. That's what you would see, the, the narrative. Um, so, yeah, it was, it's, it's a very it – was. I think I fell in love with more of that part of the business than I did the actual investigating. I love the investigating, don't be wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, to see how that's all put together and all the hard work that goes into it and all the people behind the scenes that no one ever sees, no one ever hears about, you mm -hmm. know, as far as the camera people, the audio people, the the, the APs, everybody, um, the executive producers who work behind the scenes of these shows that do all this hard work and put it together. You're, you're just seeing us on film, which mm -hmm. is, it's a, don't get me wrong, it's a big part of it, but it's not the whole story. It really isn't. They make us look good. They really do. And especially the camera. They're every step of the way. They're behind you. Them in the audio. Yeah, yeah. and, and they don't, like yeah. you. You're in a room by yourself walking, but they don't realize what's behind you. Yeah, the production or in front of you, or somebody's already in the room as you're walking in. Yeah, so you look like you're the first one in the room. You're not. The camera guy's sitting in the corner in yeah. cobwebs. You know. Yeah, I, I could definitely say like you know on our on our ghost hunters a and e um the way that you would do it we had a rule of thumb where no one i mean when we are investigating the camera guys would follow us into the building they would be with us the audio person producers weren't allowed in the building we were filming they would have to sit outside the building either in a car or at a, you know a location and listen to everything that's going on through uh yeah you know, the earpiece um and uh they would follow us around, but every once in a while, what would happen was that you get into a location and you you don't want to see the audio person on film. So the audio person would take off and go into a, an adjacent room or a bathroom or a closet and just be sitting there. And sometimes you forget about them, and you would just walk into that closet and get the shit scared. It happened to me all the time. All the time. I know, almost every episode it happened to me. I'd open a closet door or a bathroom, and an audio girl or audio guy would be laying in the tub, just looking at me like. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot of work, and I mean, if you're standing there and like you're you're literally trying not to bump into somebody with the camera, so you're trying yeah. to work with them, like turning the corner, and you're trying to keep your back to them the whole time, but they're like yeah. stuck in the corner, and sometimes they're bigger than you, and you're trying to yeah. stay where you're at, and you know work yeah. with them it's hard i can tell it's you our thing. guys man they, they were so they were they were animals they were so professional and they've been doing it for years i mean um they worked on on the original ghost hunter some of them did and when they weren't working on our show they were working on other shows like uh wicked tuna and things like that so they knew how to get out of the way like these guys were they were like top freaking notch um mm -hmm audio and video guys so you know camera ops so you they would they you know you didn't like on film like it, it all can be edited but they they did a really good job of staying out of our way mm, yeah i get it <laughs> Hot and well, you see walking into a room and somebody standing there with a you know a microphone you're like Shh. 
<laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah. Todd and Carmela would like to know how much of a challenge is it filming a TV show for you? What's the challenge for you? Like, like I'm assuming it's probably like time wise, or is it, you know, you're, you're probably going 16 hours into the day or um, yeah. like, what's your challenge part of it? A uh, challenge, shoot. The biggest challenge was, yeah, I mean, you'd be away from your family for two, three weeks, sometimes four weeks at a time. Cause you would fly to a location you would film there for a week. You would either drive or fly to another location. You could be in Texas this week, Maine the next week, Alaska the week after that. So if you're constantly flying, you're living in a suitcase. Um, you don't see your family. Uh, I mean, I, I stayed in contact with my family every day, either through Skype or Zoom. Um, and, you know, if I could get a, a signal. Uh, so it was, it was, I think that was the hardest part. And then, you know, of course you got like, People think we just go in when it gets dark. No, we're usually there like eight, 10 hours before it even gets dark, you know, because we have interviews to do. Um, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Um, so you'd be just sitting there waiting for everyone to set up, uh, production to set up, waiting for people to show up. So, um, yeah, I think it was, it, I, w I loved it, don't get me wrong, um, but it's it's a job. It, it's 99% it's work and 1% reward when it comes to it, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a lot there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's what you enjoy doing. So it doesn't seem like a, a, a job job, but it is still right. A job. Right. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, it's just, it, it wears on you. Cause you have to, I mean, you have to figure out your daily life out of a hotel room. I mean, cause I work out religiously. So I like, I'm always looking for a gym. Hopefully the, the hotel we're staying at has a decent gym. Um, trying to eat right when you're on the road, um, mm. you know, watching what you're eating. And that's very hard, you know, it really is. Uh, so it's stuff like that was the challenging part and being away from the family for so long. I mean, I didn't, I mean, I missed a good two years of my son growing up, my uh, my 11 year old, who's 11 now. Um, so yeah, it was just, I missed, you know, some <clears throat> really cool stuff, but you know, that comes with the nature, so. Uh, Ron wants to know, do TV shows help confirm your belief or does it, change your belief in any way uh from my perspective um mm -hmm. i was very blessed to go investigate some really cool locations um that were very active and that's one thing i could say about post they would vet a, a, an actual location to make sure that things were going to go down um it wasn't just someone saying oh my cat's staring at the ceiling and you know we think the house is on it um, there had to be all kinds of eyewitness reports and things of that nature. So, yeah, I, I think it, it, it strengthened me as an investigator in my belief system as, you know, what's going on out there with the paranormal. Um, it was more, it, I can't speak for every show, um, but I could speak uh, for what we did on Ghost Hunters and what I've been we are working on as of late. Uh, it, I think it's edu it educated me some too, you know, learning new equipment, learning what's not good, what's good. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and really, you know, kind of delving into it and and, and dissecting it at, at a different level that I wasn't used to at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you miss like going out with like your first team, breaking, breaking, breaking paranormal? I mean, I, mean I, I see everybody on these shows and I do all these events and everything, but do you actually just go on an event just to do, not even an event, just go hang out with your friends or go back to an investigation just for fun? <clears throat> Because a lot of times at no. this point in your life, it's just, it's work pretty right. much. Yeah. yeah. The fun part of it, uh, and I hate to say it sometimes, it's not there anymore. Uh, it's a job. Um, but it, I still love it. Don't get me wrong. Especially when you have those, um, those locations that really kind of open your eyes and a lot of stuff's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. As far as going out with friends and stuff, I, yeah. But it's like, you know, if you're an electrician or a plumber or a carpenter and you do that all day, you don't feel like coming home and doing it. Um, I'm a retired electrician. You don't tell me. Right. <laughs> so it's just, it's kind of the same thing. You're like, yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 I try to get my wife out as much as possible. Um, mm -hmm. She's, you know, she works with me all, a lot, but uh, when I do these events, if it's something close, uh, she'll come with me just cause she, she loves it. And yeah. she's still in that, that part of it where she enjoy thoroughly enjoys invest the investigation part of it where mm -hmm. 
with me when I do the events and do these appearances, I'm, I'm, I'm having to entertain at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. It's not all me concentrating on investigating and just having fun, hang out with my buddies. Uh, it's more me entertaining the people who paid to come hang out with me um, and trying to, you know, educate at the same time. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a job, but it's a, I, you, you can't, yeah, I'm not complaining. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's a job. I mean, it's something you enjoy and you know, you actually, it's, it's great to have a job that you enjoy. Yeah. To begin with. You yeah. Know, yeah. It was a hobby. Well, they, they could say to me, paranormal investigating, it's not a hobby. It's just a way of life for me. You know, it's like, yeah. I just do it. It's not really a hobby anymore, but it's something that you enjoyed as, as you're growing up. And it's also something you got into because you were curious at the beginning. Yeah. I never, I never thought you're going to be the, to this point that you're actually going to be there showing people and explaining to people what what's it about or just being where you are now with all this. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. I, I think that's pretty, very cool. Yes, I've been very blessed. Um, yes. yeah, I, I, I forced Gump my way through this. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it, there, it, yeah, there, it's, I, I love it when people think they're like, you know, they're the best at paranormal investigating mm -hmm. and, you know, and all that. It's, guys, it's a pseudoscience. How are you good at a pseudoscience? Just, you, just go with it, man. Just yeah. do your thing. Try to figure it out. Uh, try to investigate. Have a good time with it. I mean, I always say there's two different kinds of people in this when it comes to the paranormal, you know, aspect. You have ghost hunters who like to go out on the weekend, and have a good time, investigate. They're not trying to re recreate their wheel. And then you have these, you have paranormal investigators. I can do both. I've done both. Mm -hmm. um, and you have paranormal investigators who are like delve into it. They're, they're trying to learn the science of it and. And well, you know, the pseudoscience of it, I should say, yes. trying to build it um, and, and going and, and a lot of them are they they have good intentions and they're trying to do the right thing. Um, but there's a lot of people out there who take themselves way too seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's it, it, it comes with this business. It really does. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a third group. There's our group. We, we love what we do. And we love the science behind it, but we have a damn good time and we can't yeah. stop laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's where I'm at. Um, I can do both. I can be the entertainer that you see mm -hmm. on TV, or I can be the, the serious guy when I ha when I have to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, we always have fun on our investigations now, you know, because we we're, were a group that we all from different states with different teams, and we all just get together and do investigations together. Yeah. You know? That's and, the best. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. There's no, there's, there's, you're not trying to prove anything. You're not yeah. trying to, you know, you, you know, like I said, reinvent the wheel or anything. You're just going to have to have a good time trying to get some activity, see what happens and just have, and get a jump scare. I love the jump scares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love the personal experiences, the storytelling behind it. Um, I love all that. Yeah. Hey, guys. I, yeah, I couldn't see the. Yeah, I see him now. All right, hey Jenny, who had Ron know. before that? Yeah, hey Ron. Ron's a great guy, man. Let me tell you. Ron's questions next, but I didn't want to forget Jenny in between How do you there. It fun is it the people? Yeah, I think a lot of it is the people, Jenny. I really do. I think that it because I, I mean I do these all the time, these appearances, events, and it all depends on the crowd. A lot of times, you know, like in. It, you, you get one or two good people in the crowd that can get everybody riled up and have a, and, and it makes it really fun for everybody. And there's places sometimes you go where everyone's just like they're afraid to say anything, they're afraid to do anything, um, and you kind of have to bring it out of them. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's the people who definitely make it fun. Yeah, there goes Ron. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. You too, sir. I got the opportunity to meet Ron. Um, about a year or so ago now at mm -hmm. a vacation in New Jersey uh, at the, uh, what was it? The Ritz theater. Um, and Ron came out yeah. there, Ron and Lourdes uh, came mm -hmm. out there um, and it just blew my mind with the, what they do. Yeah. 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 I was with them last week. I'm going to be in with this weekend, next weekend. I'm with those Very guys cool. all the time. Yeah. That Ritz theater is pretty cool. It's a nice location. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, really cool location. I didn't get the. I wasn't there very long, but it was a really cool place. Yeah, that's a it's nice really, place to get to. It's a really beautiful location, and it has so many um, 
things that are kind of still hidden about it. And it's, mm -hmm. I, I love going there. Yeah, um, still new. So since we're at the half hour, why don't we bring up My Haunted Manor? And we'll oh, talk about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, My Haunted Manor is something that um, it came about by accident. Um, I was over in the UK back in September uh, for about eight days. I did a the festival they explained just like one of their, their big paracons um, they do every year. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was over there, well, before I got there, I was asked if I would do this show for a night uh, called My Haunted Hotel, um, which is in Chester, uh, England. And I didn't know anything about it. I you know, never heard of it or anything. So we went and I fell in love with the production guys, you know, the people who were, who were, were filming it and everything, which is, you know, uh, Danny and uh, Brett and Harry. Uh, Harry's the owner of My Haunted Hotel, which is a, it's actually a bar, like a pub downstairs. And uh, it's a 500 year old hotel in Chester, which is one of the oldest cities in, in the UK. And um, they film a full-time show there, 24 hours a day. Cameras wow. everywhere, um, full production, um, amazing. I fell in love with it. Um, I hung up with, those guys, with Danny for about three days and um, got back to the States and we started talking about bringing that concept over here um, and doing the same thing. And it, it grew legs very quickly and uh, took off. We started filming late December of last year and we've been filming ever since, almost every weekend. We have cameras. Um, the place is called the, the Samuel Miller Mansion, which is in Columbia, PA, which is now My Haunted Manor, USA. Um, and we film there 24 hours a day. We have cameras set up. We're there. We go. We're in and out of there you know, almost every day of the week uh, filming, doing stuff. Uh, and it's really it, it's really grown, leg, grown legs and, and taken off. And... Um, you know, we do events there. You're let people are allowed. The, the public is allowed to actually come there and stay overnights and be on camera all night. You know, you have experience. You'll be on the show most likely. So yeah, it's uh, it's a very cool concept, and I'm very excited about it. And it's uh, it's been doing very well. I can't you know I can't say enough great things about it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to make my way down one day. Yeah, absolutely. You have got you guys have a, a full invite. Please let me know. I would love to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is it just you, or do you? No, have it's uh, um, it I'm sorry. Yeah, I have um, I have two co-hosts, uh, Jeff and uh, Trey Bader, the Bader brothers, um, which uh, they worked for a team out of uh, Delaware called Diamond State Ghost uh, Investigators. Uh, they run Fort Delaware, all that stuff. And I met these guys um, when I was doing an event at Fort Delaware, the Bader brothers, and uh, there uh, Jeff is actually a production ad. He he does you know, behind the scenes production for commercials and things like that. So he's, you know, he, he, he knows the film part of it inside now. So it was an, it was a, it was a win win when we met and um, I really love their work uh, and they, they kill it. These boys are, are killers. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I started watching a little bit of your stuff. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Pretty cool. Definitely. I got to check it out. So I just got the floor plans and everything in the place and yeah. Yeah, it looks like some nice size place. It's it's big. Yeah, it's um when you see uh like the Google image of it, it you're mm -hmm. in front of the building and, and it looks it doesn't look that big, um but you're not seeing the side view like it takes up the whole block. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's yeah it's with the basement it's four floors. Um, it's huge. Uh, I I haven't sat down and actually counted how many rooms are in that building yet, but it's it's big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a good place to put a you know hang out for the night and just yeah get oh get you can come there. We have uh, we have two places, two rooms that are that we call dorm rooms that we have actual beds and cots mm -hmm. so people can spend the night. You know, if you do an overnight, um, we do. So how we do it is we do besides the filming part of it, we do a monthly main event where the public can come out and hang out, and we run from like seven o'clock at night to four a.m. Mm -hmm. Um, where you get to hang out with us. There's two tiers of tickets. There's the regular entry ticket, which is like 55, I believe. You get mm -hmm. to stay until 11 o'clock. And then you have the VIP ticket, which takes you from 7 all the way till 4 a.m., uh, where you get to hang out behind the scenes with us. We have a whole uh, uh, a whole camera room where we're in. We're watching mm -hmm. everything. You get to come back there, hang out, which is off limits to anybody else. 
and you get to investigate and have a great time. And then we have the regular tiers, which um, you can come there during the week by yourself with your husband, your wife, your your kids, um, and spend the night completely there by yourself. With we'll have we usually have someone in the camera room watching and making sure everyone's okay mm -hmm. uh, and just recording everything. But you got the place to yourself. You get to hang out. You get to investigate where you want to investigate. And to take your time with it, and you don't have someone over your shoulder telling you, "Oh, you got to move on to the next room." You mm -hmm. got in the place all night long until that's you right. leave the next morning. Yeah, yeah, no, that's why I like to investigate with nobody there and just. Yeah. A lot of people you know, do. Yeah. Or just, or just you know, a group of people that you know. I said, mm -hmm. you know, the public. Yeah, I've been doing this for a long. I've been doing this over forty somewhat years. So. Yeah, I like to go in and, you know, and do that. And get the feel of the place out. It takes on a different atmosphere when you're there just with a few people or by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, not to, I mean, it, believe me, our main events are crazy. Uh, we've had mm -hmm. some crazy stuff happen there. But I feel when we're just in the building by ourselves filming, like there's three or four of us. We have a camera guy and there's the three of us. And usually, you know, two of us will have cameras as well. Um, place, it, it, it gets a little wild. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So how how old is the Samuel Miller Mansion? Um, it's rounding right now, probably about two hundred and forty years, two hundred thirty five years old. Um, so let me give you a, a little uh, insight. So Samuel Miller Mansion, Columbia, PA, uh, mm -hmm. is one of the birthplaces of the Underground Railroad. Uh, oh. so it was used um, by abolitionists to bring in you know freed slaves or escaping slaves. And the Samuel Miller uh, Mansion um, was the main hub where they came in. There's actually still, there's a, if you go into the basement, there's an actual walled up tunnel where they used to come off the river into the building and they would hide them there. So were they Quakers? Uh, I'm sorry. So was Samuel Miller a Quaker? Samuel Miller never lived there. So this is what we're doing. This is what we've been actually working on. Um, is finding out the actual true history of the building. And a lot of that's on upcoming episodes. I really don't want to divulge too much. Um, yeah, do <laughs> But um, we've been, so there's four episodes out now. The first four episodes have dropped. Um, and some of the newer episodes that are coming out uh, will be, it's us really delving into the history of the historians from the town. People who are not from the town, historians we brought in to actually go through everything, the town archives, and um, really dig into it. And we found some really cool stuff. Um, and just it, so basically, also too, which is another really cool. And this is the this is the part that really gets me. The town of Columbia, PA. If it wasn't for them, there would have been no Gettysburg. So what happened was the Confederate Army. So you have the Susquehanna River. That's the, it's right next to the town. Mm -hmm. and, don't throw away and there's a there's a bridge that goes across it it was a wooden bridge and almost a mile long it's huge so the confederate army was marching onto harrisburg they got stopped there by the union army in columbia and so they're shooting back and forth for a couple of days cannonballs and stuff so what they decided was we can't let them take harrisburg so they burnt the building uh, they burnt the bridge down so what that did was force the Confederate Army onto Gettysburg, and that's where mm. Gettysburg happened. Uh, so there's a lot of crazy history there. It's it's just fun every time we're filming the stuff that we're finding the true, the, the, you know, the you know, the true history of the building. Because you know, you go into a location like this, especially it's been investigated for many years before we got there. Um, there's always rumors. Oh, so 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 died in the basement. This person, and you can never actually find a name, and everybody just goes mm -hmm. with it. Well, that's not what we're doing. We've had people tell us these stories, but we're actually delving into them and see if they're real. We're bringing LIDAR into the basement to see if there's anybody buried in the basement because there's rumors that someone's buried in the basement. Okay, so let's bring in ground penetrating radar. So that's what we're doing. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff we're doing, you know, in trying to figure out the true history of this building and who actually died there and who actually never was even in that building. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I watched a little bit. You went live on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so I watched, I watched some of that, and some of the history that you said. I'm not going to say here was, you know, how you just came across stuff that even the owners didn't know. Yeah, yeah. all the historians yeah. didn't know. Yeah, you know, so that's why we I mean, have that's pretty interesting. Working on it. Yeah, we have the town historian. Um, 
Chris and we brought in our own, own historian from Philadelphia mm-hmm. to kind of go, you know, you know, kind of figure things out. And uh, it's been paying off very well. And we've been like leaking little bits out every episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's pretty cool, I, uh, especially when the owner and historians of the town didn't know yeah. the finding evidence and stuff. I, I see, and I heard you're going to put extra cameras there. I, I think that's pretty cool that you guys are doing all your own camera work. You know, yeah. you're yeah, putting the DVR cameras all over the, the CC cameras. Yeah. You know? And I think that's, I would love to have a location that you could do that. that. That's like a dream for me, what you guys are doing, is have a location, have cameras, I just do the research right there. And yeah, have, we have, you know. Currently, we have eight cameras running in the uh, building at all times, 24 hours a day. And we can actually sit, I can sit right here on my, my computer and watch everything that's going on in the building at all times. Um, and we're adding another eight cameras in May. Uh, so that'll be 16 cameras. Plus, we're going with two live cameras that you can watch live as it's happening in the building in certain locations. Uh, before it's all said and done, there'll probably be about 24 or 25 cameras in the building. Um, we have a lot of spots we don't have covered yet um, mm-hmm. that we want to get covered because there's all kinds of crazy activity happening. Um, we did a main event um, last month where we had our grand opening, and um, we had people in the print shop who, who witnessed a, a full-body apparition walk across the print shop, not just one multiple people saw this happen wow. uh, so we're trying to get, you know we're putting a camera because what's happening the owner owns a print shop he, he does all the printing he has a printing company which is part of the building but it's 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 weird how it's like an l shape off to the side of the building so it's not mm-hmm. like in the manner um and they've had like he's had employees who are not paranormal people they don't believe in it have things happen to them getting pushed seeing things um and then we saw we had these three or four girls and another person before them in the building who saw this apparition of a man in the print shop walk across the print shop right in front of everybody there's 15 people in the room oh wow yeah that's that's awesome again stuff like that did you they know. see him when it was happening or did it yes. not show until they oh so they no, well we don't have a camera in there that's okay. why we're, we're putting cameras in the print shop now we're like we didn't realize the print shop was that active People had told us it was, mm-hmm. but like when you're getting people come to you, it's like That's people who've never investigated before. Like we had a lot of first timers for our uh, our grand opening. Yeah, you know, people had never investigated, always wanted to, and like stories of <laughs> things that happened to them in that building while they were there. And plus, we've had investigators come in there. You know, been doing this for fifteen or twenty years, like you guys have, and they're like, "This is the craziest place they've ever been." We had the people, uh, Diamond State Ghost uh, Investigators, who run Fort Delaware. Fort Delaware. They've been running for 15, 20 years now. Come in our building like, this is the most active location we've ever been. It's it was it's nonstop. It, it, so one thing happens, you walk into another room and a bunch of other stuff starts happening. It's crazy. And when it goes, mm-hmm. it just goes. It just keeps building all night long. It's crazy. So why do you think that this is like the most active place that people have ever been? Do you think that it's just that active? Do you I, think that people have not, like the ghosts are just so happy to see that people are there, that they're just interacting? Like, has it not really been that? People I think, yeah, that, yeah, it, it, it wasn't that busy before. Um, now it is. And I think that energy coming into the building and I think whatever is there is very, very intelligent. Um, and it's able to react. And um, I, I, we had something in the building a couple weeks ago when we were filming at like two o'clock in the morning, mimic everything I was saying out loud. Oh wow. my God. Yes. It was mimicking me. And we could hear it out loud and you could hear it on camera too. Like we Was no it matter. like trying to even use your voice and everything? No, it what? wasn't using my voice. It was just, it was basically just repeating everything I would say. That's funny. I came out of a I came out of a control room. Um, I was walking Jeff, who's on a show, um, up a split of stairs, and I was joking around. I said, "Okay, where are we like where I'm filming? Like, where are we going?" And he said, "Oh, we're going up to the third floor because we were doing a solo session. I was going to drop him off and come back down." And we're walking across the room, and I go, "I go like um, Matthew McConaughey, all right, all right, all right." <laughs> I'm walking up the steps, and this thing goes, "All right, all right, all right." <laughs> <laughs> So, I've, I've had that go. happen to me, but it was like literally mocking me. 
And I would say something like, all right, all right, all right. And it would go, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, this is how this was. It was more like, it wasn't like as fast as I said it was slow. It was like, all right, all right, all right. That is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was pretty funny. We, we got to get something with static com and us and everything going on there. I think yeah, static yeah, com yeah. is perfect for that. I want to get Ron and Lawrence up there and you guys are more welcome to tag along with them and mm -hmm. maybe do an episode. Um, I haven't talked to them in a couple of months, but uh, cause I've been so crazy busy. Um, I was hoping to catch up with them next month at, um, at Red Mill, but uh, they had to cancel it because uh, the lady's sister, Lisa is having surgery. So. Oh yeah. I heard. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'll catch up with them at some other point and do some stuff with them. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I, that location, you know, perfect. So, I mean, the static con from last weekend, we were getting stuff, and this week, I'm going to be with them this weekend, so. Yeah, yeah tell them I'll, I'll be, be them. I'll, I'll tell them I'll be, I'll be reaching out to them real soon here, hopefully by summer. Uh, Todd and Carmel are asking, uh, is there any location? Yes, it's funny you ask that, guys. Um, since we've been in the town of Columbia, for four months now filming um, and, and being a part of this location, we've mm -hmm. actually become members of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is MAC, um, because we actually had to go up there and have a meeting with the, the board, of, you know, the whole board of the town about two weeks ago. <clears throat> and um, the mayor, the chief of police, and they're throwing locations at us left and right to investigate in the town because they're so excited about what we're doing there and the commerce that we're bringing mm -hmm. there and um, the, you know, just the eyes on back on the town uh, mm -hmm. that has been kind of forgotten for so many years. And uh, there's locations that they keep coming out of the woodwork, asking us to come to their spot. We, and we've done a couple of them so far uh, that mm -hmm. are future episodes and we're just going to keep doing them. It's, it's become just, you know, it was Samuel Miller, my home, my home of Manor USA. And it's grown to this, the whole town of Columbia type mm -hmm. thing, uh, which is really cool. I never, I never thought personally it would, it would grow like that. And it's mm -hmm. only four months into it. Um, so it's, it's really cool to see the town behind it. The mayor, the That's mayor awesome. will be there next Friday with us. We're doing an uh, official ribbon cutting. So the whole town will be out there. Uh, we have an event wow. next uh, Saturday night. So Friday night, we're doing a ribbon cutting. And we're doing the main event uh, Saturday night. So, uh, it's really it's really awesome to see the outpouring of uh of respect and um and people you're know, getting behind this project um my haunted manor usa and the my honor my the my haunted um project which is my haunted manor um my haunted hotel and the whole the whole thing mm -hmm. you guys deep. get overwhelmed with any investigations you know where to call hey yeah absolutely yeah well, um you know I got a room for equipment. She has her experience, and uh, I got Ron Lotus at my hip. Oh, yeah. I'm at the hip. We're we stuck together. If you ever need a psychic medium, <laughs> yeah, you guys, like I said, you're well, more you know, she got hers. I got so, yeah. Are we, are we get overwhelmed and need some help out there? Yeah, you know, we're always available. I'm retired now, so I could do anything. <laughs> and I'm available during the week too, so Anthony, <laughs> I can come out there like Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, you guys, like I said, you're more than welcome. Uh, just shoot us, shoot me a message, and you, I'll, I'll get you access to the building. I got the keys to it, so I'll let you come in and do your thing. Yeah, yeah. We're always available. Awesome. I mean, so, uh, where can people find my haunted manor? Where um, is this broadcasting? Uh, well, okay, so you go to um, my, the my haunted project, which um, there's a couple ways for that. You, you have all the social media links, of course, but um. Uh, my Hunter Project is on YouTube and it's on VHX. Uh, there's two versions of it. So basically when we film these shows, the show is cut to two different shows. You got the YouTube version, which is free to everybody. Anybody can watch it. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, it's the full episodes. And you have the VHX version, which is like more behind the scenes type stuff. Bloopers and and us is having a great time investigating as well. Um, stuff that, you know, you don't see on the YouTube version. That's BHX. Um, so like I said, there's two different versions to it. And the same thing with My Haunted Hotel, which is over in the UK. Because this is one company that we're yeah. doing here. We, we work with those guys a lot. Um, they were just over here in January, February filming with us. Um, I filmed with them back last September. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a family affair. Mm. 
Uh, you going this week, this year to um back to the um the event out there in uh, September? Uh, Festival and explain. No, I'll be in yeah. California that week when they're having that, and then I have the uh, Warren's Paracon that same the week, the same week when I come back. Okay, okay, yeah, because that looks like a good event, and it looks like oh, there's a lot of people. Yeah, um, for the, anybody who ever wanted to go to UK, um, who's never been, uh, it's it's a, it's an awesome experience. Great people who run that event over there. Um, so if you're ever you know. Great, they always have a great lineup too. You know, last year was me, Dave Schrader, um, Daniel Moss, and a couple other people, which was a, it was a great time, fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and they have a really good lineup this year. They're, they're bringing back the uh, Halser Files, all the guys from that. Uh, yeah, and like I said, the people who run it are amazing. It, it's it's a full, a well rounded event that's like three or four days long, it's not just an over like one night. Yeah, it's it's a mm-hmm. it's a VIP package type deal where you get to stay in this amazing five or six year, year old hotel, which is beautiful. It's huge. It's like four or five hundred rooms. It's crazy. Um, you get to go. There's castles everywhere. You get to go see castles. Oh, uh, castles. My yeah. dream of a castle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite the experience. They, they, I can't, I cannot say a bad thing about that. They, they took very well the care of me. <laughs> the whole time I was there, because I I was out of my realm over there because I I loved it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ron and those guys are going to be there this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ron and Lois will be there. Yeah, it, it looks like a good event. I I told Ron I was going to hide in his uh tr- his his equipment so he could bring me with him. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, yeah. I'll go I'll look like a static com. <laughs> static com across my head. <laughs> Quite the flight too. I mean, people, it's crazy because like when I got over there, like, you know, it's a long flight, six and a half hours. I was like, it takes that long to get to, to L.A. here. They're mm-hmm. like, what? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's the same flight pretty much. Uh, it takes me that amount of time to get to Los Angeles as it does the U.K. or London, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, one question I always ask, how is the food there? <laughs> 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 Let's just put it this way: It's not. I, the, all right, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, not going to throw myself out there. The beer, the beer is amazing. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, me the and me and Schrader. Me and, me and Schrader shut down a, some a bar one night. Put it that way. But <laughs> um, the uh, the boys from the UK came over here, which they're all born and raised in the UK, and they didn't want to leave because our food was so damn good. But. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I always joke that my my dad is like English Protestant. My mom was Irish Catholic, and the way they cooked, a spice was salt and pepper. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing uh, was spicy. I'm not, I I had some stuff over there. It was good. Um, they tried to get me to do the blood pudding thing. I wasn't having anything to do with it. No, <laughs> just the name, name alone. It's like, nah, you just turned me off there. But uh, yeah, they had some, you know, like they, it was okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. A lot of fish and chips. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fish and chips. And it's it's different everywhere you go. Every restaurant you go to, it's different. It tastes different, the fish and chips. Um, and they know the difference between the good stuff and the bad stuff, of course. I I had no clue um, what I was <laughs> like, I'm eating over there. But uh, yeah, I survived. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well we're glad you're still with us because this has been a, a great show i mean i love the idea of the my haunted manor that's it's a really fantastic idea mm-hmm. yeah i it, it like i said it was a godsend it was all by complete coincidence you know we just we we all ran into each other in the uk and it just grew from there uh and it was a. Uh, it's it's been an amazing ride it's a full-time job shooting this thing but uh it's fun. I'm getting to work with people I, I love to work with, um, I respect, um, and it's it's great because if I, if I want to, at the end of the day, I can just come home. I'm only an hour. Yeah. Now, you know. You, you can tell just, but your face completely changed when I brought up the my ha- haunted manor. I'm, so I'm very, yeah, I'm very I'm very proud of it. I should say. I mean, Ghost Hunters, don't get me wrong. Ghost Hunters was this established beast before I ever got there. It was, you know, you had Ghost Hunters, you had Ghost Adventures. That was the two big boys. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it was already established and I was thrown in the mix as you know co-lead investigator at Grant um which was whoever who who would have thought you know yeah. it just happened that way but this right here is something we built from the ground up it's taken off over here like wildfire and we have a huge huge uh backing from the UK uh a fan base over there already which because it's yeah. been it's been running over there for two years now and the people love it um so they all adopted us of course we're the americans um and uh it's just been a crazy experience in getting to work with people you like to work with and that you don't mind spending so much time with uh is is a godsend and i can't and like i said it's great because i can come home at the end of the day if i want to we have an rv and everything there we can stay in if we want but, yeah, uh, yeah. I would. I like to sleep in my own bed. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that says a lot because from everyone I've ever spoken to in the UK, they've all said to me that they don't really even watch anything that has to do with spirits or ghosts or whatever because this has been around them for centuries. Yeah. They, I mean, it's so haunted there that it's just like, oh, it's just old hat to us. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. If getting a huge response like this you know kudos to you guys because that means a lot yeah it does and that and not just that i mean the the people over there are amazing i mean they're so generous and and just really good people i mean you go over there and everyone's real, you know there's certain parts of the states we know we're all americans where you go and just like you know no one will even look at you they you know they step over you if you're laying in the street you know mm-hmm. I, um, but over there, I'm from Queens, New York, you don't have to tell me much more. Right. It, it, over there, it's just like <laughs> everywhere you go. I can say maybe London was a little kind of like London was more like America to me. It was like New York City, London. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's not knocking. It was great. Uh, it's a great experience. But like, you know, you get outside of London and all the towns and cities outside of it. Man, the people are amazing. Um, I, I can't say enough great things about the UK people. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, your show, the reason you're so much in love with your show is you got full production. Yeah, you can do whatever you're you doing, do what you want yep. without being told this, this, and this. That you put in what and you cut whatever you, you cut out, you cut out for a reason, but you're putting in stuff that you want, not some guy in the editing room say, Hey, this looks cool. And we dealt with that a lot on Ghost Hunters. Yeah, you know, we have some really cool stuff that we thought would that never made the show like we were like why didn't like we, we would see it like two or three weeks before it was air on tv the episode like it would be sent to us if we were home or on the road and we would view it um and we'd like we'd be on like the on the edge of our seat like hoping that scene of whatever happened mm-hmm. was in the show um and sometimes it didn't make it 50 percent of the chance 50 percent of the time it didn't make it um maybe more um with this yeah, we say, hey, you know, it, you know, it was it paranormal. We don't know. We 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 can't prove it, and we're not going to use it, of course. And we, in a crazy part too, we've had so many people who have been, who've been investing in that building for years before we ever came, who are sending us footage that we're using, you know, as evidence on the show to kind of go back and try to recreate um, some really cool stuff. You guys got to check it out. Like the um, the 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 image of the child looks like a child. Stand wow. and, and it's called the kids' room, which is the crazy part. There's this little three to three and a half foot tall full image. You, can, you can't make out facial features or anything, but you can see the arms, the legs, the head, the torso just standing there. Um, you have another one where you see this black mass just shoot across the room, like it's a video and things like that. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, I don't know what time you have to leave. It's you know, it's getting late five, for you. Five, five, five. Five, five, five. <laughs> yeah, I got about another five minutes. Okay, good, good. You know so I mean? what else do you want to tell people? Like, what do you think your message is for people who are interested in the paranormal or would like to even get into the paranormal? We've already gone over that. You don't make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's, uh, feast or famine, that's for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean for people who are never investigated before um i always say your best bet and this is how i did it like 
when I when I had my experience, I walked away. I didn't join a team or anything like that. I just started doing it on my own. Um, then I started was you know not long after that I started dating my wife and she got into it. So we kind of like were you know knocking around and hit, hitting locations and renting places and stuff. Just us. And I that's how I grew. Um, sometimes if you get, if you jump into a team or something like that, there's a lot of rules and ways they do things. It might not be the way you want to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I always find yourself, you know, go out and find yourself as an investigator before you go join a team or doing that. And, so, and you don't really need to be a part of a team, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and just have fun with it, you know, and, and, and don't take it too seriously. Don't, you know, like I said, don't, don't, don't go in there and, and you know, and, and taunt and things of that nature. Go in there and just investigate. You don't have to have a ton of equipment. I walk around with an EDI a body cam and a recorder. That's all I got. That's all I carry when I go to a location, when I do a, mm -hmm. like, an event or an appearance. Um, I don't come in with suitcases and suitcases full of equipment. I, I mean, I have them, but I don't use it. Um, so yeah, just have a good time with it. And you're in one of the best, the best things, you know, a piece of equipment is you, you as a human being, uh, not some, you know, box that you put batteries in. It's you, you'll, like if you pick up on stuff like that, you'll feel it. You'll feel the change mm -hmm. in the location. Absolutely. Yeah, you'll, you can just get into a location and sit in a room and just feel it out, man. Just yeah, just do your thing. And uh, I agree with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah maybe a couple throw a couple of cameras up somewhere and just record everything that's going on while you're having mm -hmm. your experiences. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the perfect. And I always say that too. It's the best piece of equipment. You. It's you. Yeah. Your body. It's you. The way yeah. you feel. You feel the flutter in your stomach or your heart starts to pound or you get a headache. You can always yeah. tell the difference in when, you, when, it, when, it, when that pressure in a room changes and things of that nature. That's what's, what's really good about the EDIs. Um, mm -hmm. it, they regulate pressure. They, you know, they, they mm -hmm. have pressure and humidity and things. So when you see that pressure going off and you're feeling something, it, it, there's something going on. You know, yeah. so. I use the EDI also. Yeah, I love I the EDI. Also. Yeah. Multiple, you got everything in your hand. It's like <laughs> it's, all, it's all in one, and it's well, it's so well shielded. You don't have to worry about putting your phone on airplane mode. You don't have to worry about walkie talkies or anything. Mm -hmm. off. It, it's not like a REM pod, you know. It's it's just completely different uh, piece of equipment. Yeah, yeah, I know. and the rubber cushion around it. That's even better. You yeah. got the, the SD card already in it. Yeah, yeah. That's why you take the SD card and put it right in your computer. Yep, and you can sit there if you're you're hearing things, you're recording footsteps and you got that edi going off you can take everything off there and correlate it and with you know, on your laptop or on your desk yeah yep. that's, that's just i don't know if you can point. answer this in like one minute but todd and carmela wanted to know what's your most memorable moment from an investigation if you could like quick uh most memorable moment would probably be haynes alaska um on ghost hunters when i with my body cam i actually caught that full body apparition twice within like 30 seconds that's probably the most memorable moment. Yeah. The full body is always like holy grail. That's the holy grail. I, love I didn't even know the time I caught it. I heard it. I saw something. Um, but when I went back, I totally forgot I had the body cam on. And I'm like, oh shit, I have my body cam on. So I pulled it, threw it on the laptop real quick, and pulled my got back to the hotel and pulled up. And there it was twice, not once, but twice. The first time it was. A, a foot from my face standing there looking at me and the second time it was about four or five feet away from me that's so awesome yeah and we heard it we all heard it i heard it mustafa the camera guy producer and the audio girl who were two floors down all heard this thing go down the hallway um i mm -hmm. saw it in real time but when i saw it i'm in the dark pitch black alaska 30 degrees in the building and i see this black figure i hear running and but when I caught it, of course, on my body cam, it's an IR, and I could see this white apparition. Um, and I, the only way I could explain it, it looked like Casper. That's what it looked like. Wow. <laughs> he is out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I, Alaska, we, I would love to go out there. Alaska it sounds like a great place. It's, yeah. like, you know, except for the cold, but. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was there in January and February. We were there for. Uh, about 15, 10, or, 10 or 15 days. I forget. Mm -hmm. and we actually got stuck there um, because of the weather. 
for a few yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the cold does help uh, help the manifest too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the cold it's, and you know electrons in the air and you you next next to the um the, the aurora over there and all the other stuff. Yeah, the aurora. Uh, probably right a lot of probably like a lot of magnetic fields that's yeah pops up there that helps these things manifest. And full bodies probably pop up all the time. Yeah, you know, full body yeah. aberrations. Yeah. So. Well. It's six oh one. We don't want to keep you. I appreciate you know, it. It's it been, been an absolute time. pleasure, pleasure yeah. for you to be with us. You Thank can come you. Out anytime. Thank I'm you. Looking forward to letting me one day investigate with you. Yeah. Well, like you yeah. said, the door's always open. Uh, just That'd set up a time. We'll uh, we'll make it happen. Bring yeah. our doors with you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us. Definitely. All right. Guys. Thank you. Have a great one. Thanks for having yeah. me. Uh, we'll talk soon. Have yeah, a great day. We'll talk to you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Oh my God, what a Thank nice you. guy he is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we got a little time left. You know, you want the audience to ask us questions? Yeah, I mean, they can Everybody obviously send some questions out. Um, do you want to? Yeah. What, Anybody want to ask us anything? You were you at know. the Freeling Highs and with Jenny. Um, do you want to talk about what you saw there? Well, we just. We did a bunch of different things. We um, we had people coming to us, so we had our little um, sections. And uh, Jenny and I did the uh, Estes. Yeah, I see. I always saying it wrong, but Estes. yeah, we were getting some results on that. We going. We were in two different locations with wireless, and um, more stuff was coming out of one location more than the other. But we were getting names and stuff like that. And there was this one little girl there, and she, as a matter of fact. She this is the second time she's seen us. She's seen us at the Vale House um in uh Speedwell. Um I think what was that last year or not too long ago. And she seen us there, and then her father brought her to this one. She's really into it. This kid is really good. She um actually seen she's seen somebody looking in the mirror in through the window from the outside wow. with a beard, and she described him right down to what he looked like. And and then she Actually, when it did the Estes, the Estes, uh, and she went inside. She couldn't keep the headphones on, so we would let her do it without the headphones. This kid was picking up stuff left and right. It was she was really wow. good. She, I, I don't know how old she is. I mean, I, I guess she's about eight, nine, ten, maybe, and she's really good. So very interesting. Yeah, it was a very interesting night. Oh, um, Jenny said she was nine. That's young too. That's she's nine. That's I know awesome. um, on the other floors, um, Richie got a couple pictures that he drew of of stuff that was going on there, and people, you know, recognized him. Uh, Rhino Lotus got there. They, asked us, they were getting good stuff. And we had the uh, the Moon Girls there. Um, Lisa and um, Nicole were there, too. And they were getting a lot of stuff on the third floor of that building. But it, it was it was a good weekend. It was really good. Very cool. We were looking, we had a good time. Um, yeah. Goofy the says, part about was the pizza before. How right? <laughs> yeah. We now for pizza before. We had a really good place. It was like, you know, I, I got to talk about food too. Hey, Apparently I know. Food. Yeah. It's got to be pizza or cannolis. Be my next talk show <laughs> Food of the Paranormal. <laughs> food of the Paranormal. Um, Goofy wants to know when humans sometimes mimic animal sounds what does it mean it means they do not understand the animal's language perhaps something is done the same doing is doing the same in this case that isn't human oh when he said all right all right all right and the human the human uh spirit did the same thing mm -hmm. you um, know uh, we had something like that happen over the weekend but we had, you know, something ahead. I'll tell you about what we had that this weekend also. Okay. So, well, first of all, I've had mimics in my house. We now have one back again. And uh, his name is Todd. <laughs> no, he just makes fun of me. <laughs> um, I actually was home by myself and I heard, hey, mom. Like as if my daughter was going to ask me a question 
she wasn't home. No one was home. And I haven't had a mimic here in a long time. So that kind of freaked me out a little bit because this weekend um, we were asked by Interstate Paranormal, who is awesome, um, they asked us to come with them to Penhurst. So um, it was the first time I was at Penhurst, which is weird because Penhurst, everybody goes to Penhurst, right? I don't know why I've never been there, but Penhurst was something crazy for me. Um, I had myself ready. I was ready to go. I couldn't wait to get there. I was super psyched. Um, Todd and I went. Our son came with us. Um, he was super stoked. He has never really done an investigation before. He has abilities as well. Um we were assigned to teams. We had a great team. Our team was amazing. Um, the first building that we went into was the Quaker building. And immediately we got something like it was hot, really hot. Uh, something was on, like on our trail. So we're, we're going through the whole night and like, there's so much I could tell you, but we went into the basement of Devon. And if you don't know, uh, there's a part of it that is called Candyland. We sat for a little bit and um, we were told that if you clap in there, you'll get a clap back. We didn't get that. However, we were, we sat for a little while, pitch black. Nothing bothers me. Nothing scares me. As a matter of fact, if some people get scared, I'll literally confront it. Um, my son was across from there. My husband was in the corner. I was sitting on one of the beds. And one of the other girls that was investigating with us was on the other side of the room. It's a big room. I had a baseball hat on. And my son, within, I don't think it was 15 seconds, he goes, I can't do this. Flashlight on. He goes, something's blocking out all of the light in the room. Put out the flashlights again. Same thing within just the same amount of time. Freaked out. We tried it again. I had something stand right up against the brim of my baseball hat and literally walk its way around the brim of my baseball hat. And I felt sick. I flipped on my light. I said, I don't think I could do this either. It blocked everything. It felt like I was getting black tunnel vision. Turn the light back off. Same thing. I said, I can't do this. And I apologized. And the girl that we were with said, it's okay. I mean, I don't feel the way you feel. I don't get that emotional, whatever. I'm not an empath. I'm not whatever. She's like, it's okay. I said, I'm just going to turn my flashlight on and put it between my knees. So there's a slight light. We did the clapping again. And then she said, I'm going to try the shave and a haircut. So she clapped the beginning. None of us heard anything. Finally, we were like, all right, we give up. I turned my flashlight on, I stood up, and I started throwing up. I don't ever get like this, never. And like a lot of you in the comment section, you've all investigated with me. Nothing gets me to that point. We walked out, I was fine. We got down the hall, we started looking into other rooms, and it was said that there was a room where someone was doing dark magic. They were summoning demons. I was feeling for the room, and I said, this room makes me feel disgusting. That's it. Hmm. We go into the room. This room, this closets locked and they say that there is a demon locked in the room in the closet 
So I'm standing there and all of a sudden this thing on the floor is getting darker and darker and darker and darker. And it's a sigil that I'm seeing almost like burned into the floor. And I said, I'm seeing something on this floor and it's kind of like what I have on my arms. Like, I don't know how you could see this. Like these. Yeah, I can see it. Like these. Um, these are called keys of Solomon. These are the higher keys of Solomon. They're for protection. Um, but these were, this was like a lower key of Solomon, which would be like summoning demons or whatever. Um, and I said, it kind of looks like that but it's not painted and it's not, it wasn't like a fluidy kind of thing. It was more like powdery. And I said, I don't, I don't know what the substance is, but it's something odd. And I said, I don't know if it's like a brick powder, like somebody scraped the brick down or whatever, but there's something there and no one else would have, would see this right now. It's something that I'm seeing like with my third eye. Um, and it was a ritual done to summon a demon. And then there was another ritual done to put the demon in the closet and like keep it locked. And then they would have to do another ritual to call upon the demon to pull it out. So <clears throat> there were things drawn on the walls, like upside down pentagrams. And I said, those things were not done by the same people. That's kind of more like for show these were people who actually know what they're doing. Um, I found out later that what was done was done in ash, which would make mm. sense. So we go back out and we go down to the end of the hall and we're standing in this intersection. My husband's looking through pictures and he sees this mist in like a long, thing over the top of my head and then there's a mist around me where I where I got sick but we saw something else that looked like a hanging skeleton so we were like let's go check this out so as we went Chris was sitting my son was sitting with one of the other people that we were investigating with and she was kind of sitting at the intersection with cameras down all the hallways and the other four of us went to see if this was in Candyland. So we go all the way down the hall. We turn the corner. Now, I forgot that I was using my cell phone to record our session in Candyland. I forgot to turn it off. I'm an idiot. I never remember to turn my, my recording off. <laughs> and uh, we go down to that room. This skeleton was not there. It was actually a white figure painted in the corner of the wall. So we're like, oh, this is what it is, but it doesn't explain the white mist in this band or what is around me. So we turn around, we come back and they're yelling to us, you are not going to believe this. We heard a woman screaming just as you turned the corner to get away from us. So they play it back for us and you can hear this blood curdling scream mm. from far away. So it was just as we had turned the corner. I'm not thinking anything of it at the time. We get home, we go to bed because we got home at like 4.30, quarter to five, something like that. I play it the next day I still had my recorder running. Oh, wow. Not only did we get that, we got claps back. We didn't oh. hear the claps at the time like everyone else did, but we heard, mm. we got the claps on here. So I'm like, I'm an idiot. I have 36 minutes of recording on my phone. <laughs> I have to go through now, but we did get the claps. We got two claps back for the shave and the haircut and they mm -hmm. were like really light. Mm -hmm. So it sounded like a little kid, but mm -hmm. this scream was something like you've never heard in your life. And it wasn't, it didn't even sound the same. It kind of sounded like this. 
And I'm like, Todd, you need to hear this. I played it for my son. I put it in our group. It, the phone was in my pocket. So that even should have made it like lighter. It was blood curdling. And it was at the exact same moment that we had turned the corner because you could hear us having our conversation. You could hear us walking. You could hear the moment that we got into the room. And it was exactly when the phone was turned off when I realized. It's so strange because none of us heard this. Not one. Weird. I mean, when you get EVPs, Usually it's like that. Nobody hears it until you play back. A lot of times when we get the uh, EVPs. But yeah. they heard it from all the way down the hall, and they have it recorded too. And they heard, physically heard it. Yes, and they screamed to us. You cannot believe the scream we just heard. And it was louder for us, and we didn't hear it at all. Hmm. So crazy. Um. That's, that's, you know, I mean, it happens. I mean, you can have two recorders in your hand. One recorder will get a record, will get AVP, the other one in the, it won't. It's just, you know, sometimes you go to one recorder over the other one. But and, why? So does anyone know why that happens? Is it that they only want us to hear what they want us to hear? Now, someone said that it was a glitch. I don't believe that that's a glitch. There's no way in hell that someone else got the same recording that I got. Mm -hmm. And some of us didn't even hear anything. And some of us did hear something. And it's at the same exact time. It's not a glitch. Someone else said. Sound envelope. I never heard that. I never heard that either. Someone else said that it sounded mm. like a, the call of a raccoon because it's in like rural Pennsylvania and they've seen raccoons in the buildings and blah, blah, blah. Now that I can understand. And if it explained it and there was proof of it, I'd get that. My husband yeah. has heard raccoons. He's lived out in the middle of like a wooded area and he knows the sound of raccoons because he's listened to them. We've even gone online and we've heard all kinds of raccoon calls doesn't match. Uh, I I know sometimes animals do have effect with some of the stuff that we do get, like um, the red the red fox. When the, when a female goes in the heat, it sounds like a baby, literally a yes. infant crying. And then you're in a location, you hear an infant crying, you're like, wow, it could be a female fox in heat. Um, owls, you got this, the the owls, the screech owls. They sound like they're screaming. They sound like if they're at a distance, it does sound like a woman being attacked. You know, so it sometimes animals do have effect. But in a light where you were, it's it's a possibility because there is a lot of animals around that area. But you got to look at, choose, you know, what animal you think you're going to refer to. You know, mm -hmm. what animals in that area to refer it back to. You know, it's, that's what, that's the, the thing. And you I would know. even say, yeah, that could be a fox, but mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like a fox. And, and everybody it was else heard it and we didn't time. hear it at the time. So if it was a fox or an animal screaming, you would have heard it. You record have heard it. I Other had people four did hear it. Four four people four heard it. But what I'm saying, you didn't hear it. But and that recording. So that people. shows it couldn't be any kind of um, animal like that. I don't think. Uh, Dr. Bear manipulates between two different people. Uh, the same room. Yeah. It, it could be. That. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird because since we got home, um, that's when the mimic happened the next day. Yeah, well, you might have brought something with you. I'm going to bring that up here. The, the one that this year? Yeah. About spirit manipulating feet between the two different people. And where that voice or where yeah. this came from, we were in the room where I was mm -hmm. throwing up. Yeah. So that I, that could be, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, take that off there. But 
going back to Ufi thing with spirit, the animal spirits. I mean, just this weekend in the room that Jenny and I were in, when we first got in there, the people in the back of the room, because we had we were in the front and we had a, people sitting in chairs around the room and we were doing our, our thing. And a woman heard a bark. She oh. heard a bark because I heard a dog. I heard a bark. There's any dog. There's no dogs. Not around there. You know, it's it's a lot of property. There's no dogs on that property. And um, she heard a dog bark. So we're like, oh, well, you know, and I, I write a note down and stuff. Second group comes in. Another woman. Not even knowing about what happened to the thing. I heard a bark from the same corner. All right. I'm like, that now this is getting interesting because two separate groups came in two separate times. They didn't talk to each other, but different they both heard it pop. So as as we were going on through our thing, another person heard a growl in that same corner. I'm like, now that this is interesting because there was nothing to do with any of the two groups. They didn't know what's going on, and it's, this one here is a growl now. At the end of the night, um, you know, at the end of the night, we're packing up. And one of the people came in and, uh, well, uh, Nicole from the full moon. And she goes, and they go over the corner where the growling, the barking was. There's a picture on the wall of the little girl that lived there with her dog that died oh there God. and was buried on the property. So I didn't even know that picture was even in that corner. So, the, so they hear the barking and growling from that corner. You know, I specifically, I didn't hear it. Um, I didn't do a review on my camera yet. My camera's still in the car. <laughs> but um, just to get those growls and some from people in the audience telling you this, two separate, I, I thought it was pretty cool. And then there's a picture in that corner of a, of a girl. And a small picture, too. So if you're looking from across the room, you couldn't see it was a dog or anything. You just see, no, there's a picture, and that's it. You can't tell what's in it. So we also a lot of disability voices coming to speak. Yes, yes. We had, um, since we're going wireless, we had one of the women in one of the rooms. Jenny's right. Um, we had a woman in one of the other rooms. And you could hear, because we, the person has the headphones on, so you really don't hear the spirit box. Can't hear it. And I had the noise canceling. So you couldn't hear nothing. And the woman just kept on saying what she was hearing. But we kept on hearing voices coming through the speakers coming from that room, a disembodied voice, that somebody was talking around this person, like right up against that person mm -hmm. and saying something that when the person came into the room after we got, you know, got done, we said, you know, we heard disembodied voice. Of course, I wrote everything down, but we heard disembodied voices. She goes, there was somebody, she goes, there was somebody hovering over me the whole time. I felt something hovering over me. Like somebody was in there talking. We found out that the room, the, um, the man of the, the house, it was a billion room. Um, it was a, uh, a music room and a billion, then a billion room. So it was like a kind of like a man's type of thing. And there was a woman in there. So there might have been that he had a problem with women being in his uh, his territory, you know, for so like for men only type of thing. So maybe that's why he was hovering over and, and saying things because we, we kept on hearing names and stuff coming through besides what the woman was saying from the spirit box. So it was an interesting night. It really was. Who who is the time. Facebook user that's commenting about the dark spirits and the frequency? Um, I can't get it out. I can't bring up my Facebook. I'm trying to bring it up to see who it is. And it doesn't seem to be letting me. Yeah, it's not letting me bring up my let me see if I can get it on this way. Um it's not letting me see it for some reason, some strange reason. The Facebook user, just give us your first name. The person on Facebook, because you're not coming, your name's not coming up. Dark spirits um, have the wisdom of the ages. Well, so does uh, positive spirits. Not just dark. You got you got the, the negative and the positive. Oh, it's Wade Kirby. Thank you, Wade, for all that information. Hey, Wade. I appreciate um, that. That's really interesting. I, I haven't I mean, heard about the the sound envelope or the uh, mm -hmm. 
And and Ufi said you need a vectorized microphone. Thank you, Wade. That's really interesting. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. You know, um, we have well, such really in like interesting people and some of the most intelligent people come into our comments. You guys are really super smart. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's like when it comes to where to help. Um, I love it. You know, when it comes to entities from ages or old stuff that's been there, it's not always negative because everybody sees movies and everybody thinks you see something from a thousand years ago, it's going to be negative and stuff like that. It could just be that they're very ornery because they've been stuck so long. It's possible. And the longer they're stuck, the more ornery they become. Mm -hmm. and, and it, I just look at it like, like the way I look at it too. Look, an old guy like me. And some young kid comes in and starts trying to tell me things. I'm like, I get out of here. Like, what do you know? So maybe just spirit, that's old spirit, looking at us like we're new. What the hell do we know? They ran for a long time. Maybe they know more. I you think know? we all have our um, our own expertise. No way, you're not. I think that that was brilliant that you added that. We, there are so many of us here that... You know, we do have our expertise and we've been doing certain things for such a long time. And a lot of us didn't know that. That that was brilliant to add that. Thank you. And Ufi, a vector mic can act like audio radar and locate varying in distance to a sound source or act like. Same. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's um, that's important to know because a lot of us don't realize that we need certain things like that or it would have been a good idea to have those things mm -hmm. well some of those things uh, we just can't afford how about that <laughs> sometimes I'm, you know, it's like, i mean i don't know how much something like that would cost yeah, is it something that's like inexpensive but we just don't know enough to have something like you yeah. know a lot of times with the paranormal i know when i was coming through and a lot of people i know came through Everything's being, um, it, it's trial and error. You know, we come out and we try some new piece of equipment. Let's try this. Let's, let's try that. And we spend so much money on stuff that I know I got boxes and cases of stuff that's not, um, that's not used anymore. And I tried them. Like, uh, I, I, I bought these things that actually, um, Test the the um, the sound and how 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 um, oh wow I just went blank on what it's called the decimals on the sound you know on how loud sound or how low I think it's depending how low the sound is that spirits to come through maybe you record with that or how high you know so um, you know you buy all these different things and try. And some work, some don't. And then nowadays, a lot of the stuff that did work, they make into new, uh, new type of things with fancy boxes and stuff. And they charge a lot, but uh, vectors made it is easy construction. So we're separate speakers. Okay. Or right, try boom. Triangle boom. Hmm. So it's, it's like a ninety degree type of thing then. Okay, measure the sound level. It's separate. Uh, plot circle. All right. Yeah, I'm just reading what she was writing. Um, longer than me, 30 years worth. But, um, you know, you're always trying something new when you first get into it, and then we just continue going with what we got and constantly learning. I, I don't care how many years we've been doing this. I've been doing this 40 plus, plus, plus years. And I'm always learning something new from new people or just getting great ideas of something that somebody just brought into investigation, you know? Uh, look at uh, Kamel, um, Camella. Did I say it right, Camella? Camella and Todd. They brought yeah. that little bell thing there. I think that, that was, was awesome. a great idea. I mean, wow. You know, a little bell, bing, bing. You know, of course, now it's it's connected to this fancy thing to make it ding. 
but you know something that's could be a trigger object made into a, a piece of equipment like the like yeah. the, the uh, stuffed animal you got the uh the cat you know yeah, you know i i try well first all I'll, I'll talk to todd and carmel about their comment so the picture in the tunnels at penhurst we went to the tunnels in Rockwell. Rockwell building is no longer there, but the tunnel is. So we went through a particular door to get in and you can go left, which was a short distance, or you can go right. And it was like, you can go in and then there's a turn and then it's a long way to the very end. And I guess they, the buildings all connect through tunnels. Um, so it was a wicked storm. There was a wicked storm coming. Um, so when we first walked in, I went in with my son and Todd was behind us. Ironically, Todd's my husband's name as well. So we walked in and immediately I said, I really don't like it in here. I feel like I'm going to be sick. There's something here. And everybody wanted to go right. And I said, everything is going to be on the left. So we all went right and we sat up and it looked like we were camped out <laughs> for the apocalypse. There were REM pods and, um, you know, laser lights and SB sevens, like everything you could think of set up in this one long hallway and we got nothing. And my son said, mom, do you want to go down the other end of the hallway? And I go, yeah, I'll go with you. So we only had like a, an hour or something or 45 minutes for each area. So we got up and we walked through everybody's stuff and set off all their lanterns and, all their <laughs> and everybody was pissed mm -hmm. off. So we went down to the other end and we sat and I, you can literally see me turn green and we're sitting there on the edge and we're using, uh, Dave Giuliano's Tempest and we're sitting there and we're just asking questions and it came up that uh, there was something like gateway. Um, we asked who, who are you? And it said asylum worker. Um, it said something about like, it was all very dark answers. Like, that they were trying to like draw us in. Um, no, Ufi, the puking was not something that I had eaten. I hadn't eaten all day. And this was like, we had, I think I had like one or two pieces of pizza and that was kind of it. Um, and then I felt fine. It was just that one place. And it was like, I wasn't even feeling sick. It just, I got sick. Uh, and then Todd was taking pictures. And if you guys aren't friends with him, I'll have to put something up on, on my page and I'll put it up on Dimensions page. It is a swirling black mass and it looks like there's, it almost looks like a tornado with shit flying around inside of it. It's weird. And I, both, both my son and I felt very, very sick there. And it's weird. It's weird to look at. Um, we couldn't wait to get out of there. It was just bad. Uh, my son said there were two doors at the end and that you could kind of see a little bit of light coming through. And then there was a chair against it. And he said he saw someone looking through the doors behind a chair. Um, it's just a big black swirling mass with stuff like flying around inside of it, like a, like a tornado, it looks like. Um, it it made both of us sick. It's very weird. Um, what was the other thing we were going to talk about? We were on no, we were just talking. Um, we were talking about that. I was um, talking about the um, different stuff I've been using through the years. I was just looking at some of the things here. Yeah, um, yeah. Todd, Tana, and Camilla and uh, Raul, they went to the Montgomery House this week, last weekend, and um, I heard they got a lot of good evidence there. And the dead bell—that's what it's called—the dead bell. What they have? The dead bell. 
Yeah, and it's pretty cool. It really is. I thought it was a nice piece of equipment. I like the Dead Bell. Yeah. Yeah, Dead Bell, it's, it's, it's something different because I – and I'm at a point that I'm not looking at any, for any more equipment. Something like that I might I might go I for. I would definitely get that. You know, because I, I think I have enough equipment. I'm called the – why go place? They call me the equipment guy. You know, because <laughs> I come with more equipment than I use half the time. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have time to even set up half the stuff that I have. So I, I've been going with smaller bags and stuff like that to do these things. You know, but – you know, that when you go, I mean, when you go, Maureen, what's your best piece of equipment that you like to use? Myself. <laughs> um, yeah. I like dousing rods. I like. It's old school stuff. Yeah. I mean, like I could literally go anywhere with dousing rods, my phone, because you could take pictures and record with it. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have any of my other equipment, I'd be okay. Yeah. Which I have, I know. See, I've done it. I worked down, and I I was one of the construction guys that actually, um, when after the towers went down, the uh, building next door, the um, Deutsche Bank, uh, was still up and got really damaged when the buildings went down. And I was part of the crew that we had to take it down. It was a, but we had to take it down with asbestos, so. I'm asbestos rated. I got the license and everything. So I was part of the crew that went in there and I kept it lit. We were the electricians that kept everything lit. Everybody took the, everything out, but we just kept it lit. And we went to the locations there and all I had was my cell phone because you couldn't really bring nothing with you in there. And I was getting stuff that I didn't want to get. But yeah, sometimes you got just your cell phone. And um, you just record, and you just take take pictures, you know. Yeah. That's that's about all, and um, it gets, you know. Sometimes um, you get some stuff. I got some good stuff with with the uh, cell phone in the past. Even when I have my uh, my iPhone and my, uh, you know, past all these, I got some great pictures in the past um, with just my cell phone. And I also got great evidence. I, I use WazePad. Wait, and uh, and I I got some good stuff going back, you know, on pay, uh, on my uh, tablets and stuff. I, I have one thing where um, it sounds like somebody being attacked and everything. My brother and I both got it. We called each I called him up to tell him something, and next thing we know, I'm getting I can't get in touch with him, but I'm getting like somebody moaning and screaming and help, screaming for help. And I'm like, what the hell? So I took took my my um, my tablet and I was recorded was getting off the phone. So I'm like, this is crazy. What the hell? I called my brother up and it's like, eh. Then a couple of days later, he contacts me. He goes, this is weird. He goes, I got this message on my phone. I have no idea who it's from. And I recorded it. I want you to hear it. So I go over it. It was the same recording I had. Same time I called him up, he got oh. it. He got the call in. It says nobody on. There's nobody on the call. It, it said I, I unidentified call. It left him. It left him a voice message. He didn't even record. He got. He left him a voice message. He was leaving a voice message on him, and I was hearing the same thing. And I was recording at the same time. It was like really weird. It was like. Weird sounds, and then you hear somebody help, and you know, I'm um, burning and all this stuff. Yeah, it was like a really crazy recording. And it's like they're talking to you from a phone in hell. Yeah, that, that was like in 2007, eight, something like that. Weird. So it's not even not even new. It, it was back then. I'm gonna try stuff. something. I'm gonna blow us up. Yeah, go blow us up, hey. Okay. Yeah, everything I can't see what's down the hall. You got a glare. Oh, I got a glare. I'm looking. 
Is that the that is that the still picture of um, the thing you said it was a it's swirling? A still picture, so it. I can see stuff going around. Yeah, so that's like a tornado type thing. Yeah. Okay, that's a still picture for me. I'll put it. I'll put it up on Dimensions of the Supernatural's fa uh, Facebook page, so you guys can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. What's the situation in New High Trigger? Yeah. But, yeah, I, I mean, some of the stuff I got in the past to now and, you know, it seems like some of the stuff I got back then with some of the old equipment, I, I still use that as evidence, you know, or I showed the people just to show them this is what I got in the past from still pictures to actually some videos. And uh, audio, it's definitely I got a, a ton of um, audio EVPs from the past or so disembodied voices. But some of the stuff that's used nowadays, it's just, it's just as good as the stuff that we used in the past, you know. And well, then there's other stuff that you, you you're still getting, you know, a lot more clearer with uh, some of the stuff that's coming out, you know. Yeah. So, there's um, like I I have a lot of I have a lot of footage to go through to see what else because, like I said, there's the claps. We actually had, um, I mean, like as soon as I, as soon as we went into the first building to go through, it was weird because we started on one floor and when I put my hand into the building, it was ice cold inside and it was warm that day. Mm -hmm. And then I stepped in a little bit further and it started to get a little bit warmer, but I stepped into this first room and it was like, um, like their bathroom. It was mm -hmm. hot in this room. Hot. Oh, really? Okay. And then every other room was cold. Mm. And then we went into that room later, and it was just normal, like the other rooms. So I don't know what the hell was going on in this room, but it was weird, weird. And we just kept kind of like trekking along, and we got like strange things. We would go into one room, and I put on... Um, I put on like, I couldn't find my Panda box. It was, it was like, I had it in this bag and no matter what I did to try to find it, it was like they were moving it around. So I couldn't find it. Mm. So I had another <laughs> thing. Um, it's kind of like an SB seven, I guess, but I turned that on and I'm listening and I'm asking questions and I said, hi, my name is Maureen. I'm here to talk to you. I just want to, you know, I'm here to help you and get your story out. And, you know, what can you tell me? And I hear this shit. <laughs> here, here we go again. More people to ask questions. And I was like, yeah, you know, I understand that there are a lot of people that come here to talk to you and you're probably a little bit annoyed by these questions. And I hear bitch. Hmm. And my son goes, are you sure that that was with a B and not a W? <laughs> <laughs> like, Either way, they're not wanting to ask any questions. The same guy was not happy with whatever we were doing. So I was like, okay, so, you know, do you want us to leave? And you hear, get out. Like every place we went, they did not want to talk to us. They were not happy about asking, like answering questions. I think they're so overwhelmed with every time they've spoken to people that they're just wanting to be left alone. They don't want us there anymore. They just want to be left to the dark to just rest. They don't want us there. Someone, I said, so if, you know, if you're here, give us a sign. Can you, you know, touch my hand? Can you make a noise? We had stuff thrown at us. Mm. They don't, yeah, they don't want to be bothered. I, I mean, unless I went to Penhurst, I drew a picture. I'm going to try to bring up the picture. All right. But when we went to Gwen Penhurst, let me see if I could bring that picture up. Like even the little kids, because yeah. I know, you know, having either mental problems or low IQ, maybe they can't speak. I put the cat out, didn't touch it. Really? 
nothing. They didn't talk. They didn't touch REM pods. They didn't want to come close. I said, if you can touch my hand, can you hold my hand? I'll hold your hand if you're scared. Nothing. They wanted nothing to do with us. Hmm. That's. Yeah, it's not letting me do it. Maybe next time. But yeah, Penhurst is interesting because when we went there, the time we went there, um, that's when still um, at the beginning, pretty much of the. Ryan and Lotus were doing the the, the the box. They were doing the box at the time, the radio, the um, the DRV. Um, and they went up to the – we went to one building. I was on the first floor, and they went to the third floor. And right after – right before that, my friend passed away, you know, Joey, the one I'm, I'm always mm-hmm. talking about. And they were on the third floor. And Joey was – when he was sick, him and I – uh, he always he said you know he's he was a great investigator he was one of the best and he told him and I he told me that you know if anything happens I want you to contact me and I you know so we I said listen if you're gonna do something like that you have to we have to get a, a code between you and I you and I know it nobody else so if it you do come through. I could tell it's you and not somebody else saying that's you. So we were, um, I was on the first floor doing some of the investigation. Ron Lourdes and Joe, Joe, um, Giuseppe, Uncle Giuseppe was on the third floor. And we were asking, you know, to come through. And I was like, you know, come through with, with the, uh, you know, What's the code? What, what's our word, Joey? You, if you're here, come through and talk to us. It came through. Wow. The word, the, the, the word that I told Joe C and, and uh, Ron what it was. And they were like, they couldn't believe it came through. And for me and for them, it was like amazing that our friend had just passed. I was an investigator. Actually, he came through with the, the just the code that I knew was him, and then I knew it was him because he told me to go. He told me to go f off because that's what Joey and I always always met, messing with each other. But yeah, um, Penhurst he came through and he came through a couple times that night. Um, then Joe Giuseppe started feeling some something like bothering him. And he started leaving. So I'm like, Joe, you okay? He goes, no, no. As he's leaving, he left. And he had his um, body cam on. He leaves. So when we do the review, you see him, you, you can see him walking towards me with the body cam. I'm like, Joe, you okay? He goes, no. And he is, after that, he's dead. He'll, he's, he's, he's dying, something like that. As he's walking by, and you hear it. You hear it on the um, playback. You didn't hear it. We didn't hear it at the time because he's dying, and I'm like, "Holy, that was crazy!" That response right there in Penhurst. Plus, I drew that picture of I, I seen a a child, a, a little because the building we were in were were supposed to be boys mm-hmm. over there, and they range from infants to eighty years old. They were just dropped off there, and it's, there was men, you know. It's disgusting. And they they squeezed them into this one building, and um, I actually seen a child in the corner huddled up, crying. And of course, I didn't get it on film, but I, I drew the picture of it. It was sad. Um, it was a very sad uh, feeling to have, and you feel. The feeling sometimes you go into these rooms there and you you gain the feelings of what these people were going through, you know, like you threw up, you probably got overwhelmed with what you know, and you get and you get and you're just there and you just all of a sudden you're just sad and depressed or you know it, it's it was sad. And you know, that wasn't even called an uh, asylum at that time, it was called a school. No, State it was school. called um Penhurst school for the feeble-minded and epileptic. 
So I mean, yeah. it was even cool. It was it's like you know the disgusting yeah. things that they did to these people makes me so angry that I wish I was able to go back in time and and take these people out myself. If and and knowing how the minds worked for these children and even adults, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you have a scared animal, they bite. Right. Same thing with these people. They were scared. They couldn't, they weren't vocal. They couldn't verbalize their fear. So they bit, they yanked all their freaking teeth out. Yeah. That oh. made me so angry. Oh, that happened to a lot of places. Even happened in jails. West Virginia mm -hmm. Penitentiary. They had a section. We, when we went to West Virginia Penitentiary, on the in one of the buildings there, they still have the chairs, the, the dental chairs. Oh, they have them there. And they had the dental chairs there that they, and it was, we did EVPs there. And we were getting disembodied voices saying, uh, you know, what are you doing here? What, what? And um, pull teeth, we're mm -hmm. getting. And, uh, you know, teeth, you know, they did it all over. If they, if they bit, take all your yeah. teeth out. They explained that if, uh, because there were men and women there, um, and they used the, the R term, uh, because of their low IQ and not wanting to continue to have them breed that way, that they would just um, make it so they couldn't breed anymore. Mm -hmm. And they just removed their insides. Or if yeah. they did become pregnant, they just killed the babies. Mm-hmm. And some of some of the ways that they did it, it was like back alley coat hanger type things. Um, well, at at um, Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, at Trans Allegheny West in, in West Virginia, there was a child that was born to one of the um, the patients that were there, and they're not sure who the father was, but she grew up there. And she 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 was like. I think about seven, eight years old, and she ended up dying. I think from influenza or something like that, at the the, the prison. But she was born. They had her born, and she lived there. And she she was a, a normal child, you know. It was sad, you know. Yeah, Ufi wanted to know: Has any paranormal group ever investigated a slaughterhouse? I'm sure there has, or one of the W. WW2 concentration camps. That's they, interesting. There, there probably are a lot of people that have done that, but we're not in Europe. So, well, no, there's one here. Actually, there's more than one here. And I've never knew this. And it's weird because we don't learn enough history in this country. So, you're talking there's, about Japanese um, infirmary camps? The one in Hawaii? That was the Japanese. Uh, that they, they were in prison as a, they were United States citizens that were actually captured and put into these camps there's the japanese so there is one in hawaii or there was one in hawaii i should say there are some all over the country we just didn't know them um it's extremely extremely haunted you can actually find the video um the video of the show we shall not name <laughs> I know what you guys love when I say that, uh, you know, GA, um, and his name starts with a Z, but he did do an episode on that one. Uh, can't think of the name of the camp, but it's weird. They have all these little tiny bungalow type things. And these people slept in like little, little tents almost. It's super super haunted and they did horrible horrible mm -hmm. things to these people mm -hmm. um you can look it up just by looking up like uh pow camp in hawaii or i think there were even some on the east coast if i'm correct and and like in the middle of the country my cousin my well, husband, hawaii was an estate at that time was it i don't think so in, in 1958 it became a state 
And that was during World War II, was like in the 40s. 42, yeah. like 48, something like that, 42, 43, 44. But yeah. the things they did to these people, it was just gross. I mean, I, I can't imagine how anyone with a heart can do some things to people, like mm -hmm. the things that were done. Like, Penhurst is just, I don't know. I, I can't even, there was a, there was a five day, special done by this guy named Baldini and uh he went in and he they said he immediately started to throw up because of the smell but then it just broke his heart that it was like that and he he brought this into the public so that they can see what was going on and um he st he outed them and like I don't know, 68 or something like that. But the this place didn't even close until 87. But I guess he shed some light on what was going on. They were given $5 per person from the state. And 80% of that money went towards the staff. So can you imagine what they were probably eating? They didn't even have clothing or diapers or whatever. They were just chained into beds adults and children both 50 mm -hmm. kids chained into beds in one room at a time that, that was just that was right here even in new york um but um what was that the um oh they had the big thing on that um not bellevue bellevue right? bellevue. bellevue the kids were walking there was no clothes all going to bathroom all over and everything like that so they i mean places I mean, I, look, I, I, I did the um, uh, Kings Kings Park. That was um, one of those places where the overflow from um, Bellevue and everything else went out to Long Island. And they abandoned, they're, some of them abandoned buildings now. And, you know, you go in them and stuff. And you go in there and you, I mean, you're hearing all kinds of stuff and you're seeing. And it's such... Like I said, you know, I, I, investigation I know. wise, investigation wise, it's I mean, just to get answers, it's what we like to do. But sometimes it's emotional and stuff that gets to us also. I mean, that's yeah. you know, uh Mufi says the Aztecs and uh, the Mayan ruins and stuff. Yeah, there must have been people that have investigated there. I don't know anybody of my people that have anything to have as they've gone to South America or down there to do any of that. I've been there. Um, I felt very, uh, I mean, obviously I was very interested and very curious and I felt a strange connection to it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I was there on vacation. I didn't have any of my gear with me, obviously, but I would definitely go back mm -hmm. now that I know what to look for. And I would take some equipment with me. Maybe just because you can't take everything on a plane with you, but I would take mm -hmm. dowsing rods. I think I would probably, you know, tune myself in a little bit more. But I think that would be cool to see. Yeah, I think it's something like that. That that old. I think dowsing rods and um, um, the pentagram, the um, pendulums, pendulums, and you know, even a Ouija board might even be good at that stuff. Yeah, you go to those old ruins. They don't have no idea what. Any of the stuff, you know, anything electronics, anything back then, you know, anything with a light was evil to them. If you, you know, what I mean, sometimes you have to go and do what they've done at that time to, you know, you, sometimes to do good to do the history of the location and see what kind of religion and what they actually did to, to actually um, communicate with their dead. Maybe that that'd be good too, you know just to do the history of what kinds of stuff that would uh, be used to investigate with. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want to scare them, you know, and mm -hmm. they might speak Spanish, but it might be a derivative of Spanish because we don't mm -hmm. know. It could be different. Like look at, you know, it could be like Sanskrit was going way, way back. There might be something a little bit, Mm -hmm. different than that so you'd have to really be careful as to what you're going to get from it mm -hmm. and what you might conjure from it you don't want to have to buy a second airplane tickets for something that's uh stuck on you 
Yeah, like look at the Brady Bunch. They they brought back. <laughs> <laughs> they brought something back. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck with that too. Yeah, um, definitely not that. It's getting to that time, I think maybe. It is it's seven. Uh, You know, but we have, we have good shows coming up. Absolutely amazing shows coming up. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Mm -hmm. And if anybody, we are going to be pre recorded for tomorrow night. So if you want to go on our regular show time, 7 30, we will be there. So if you anybody missed some of this show, you could go back there and review it, I guess. You know. You know, so that's, I think that's it, huh? Yeah, this was a okay. fun one. Yeah, it was good. We had a great beginning and I think a good end and good talk at the end. Yeah, I like so. talking about some of the things that, you know, that we have happen and we don't get a chance to really talk about it or have other people kind of come in and talk about what they find or what mm -hmm. they know. And it's good because... The people who do get to investigate and they find things that are not really, you know, the norm. It might be might be good to do something like this once in a while. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's a chance to answer some of the questions in the audience. We don't always get a chance to answer everybody because everybody comes in and then you got a guest talking and you don't want to interfere, you know, let the guests continue talking what they got to say. Because sometimes it's the show goes a different direction from the questions and everything, but we, it's not that we don't try to answer the question. Sometimes we don't get a chance to, you know, because the way the, the um, it's going with the guest. So. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you want to talk about next week? Um, well, we let it be a surprise. I got to contact him. And if it, he does come, which he, he said he was, I believe he will be. Um, it's going to be about Bigfoot. No, <gasps> Bigfoot. It's be about Bigfoot. It's not going to be about Todd. <laughs> not not her husband, Bigfoot. Which the real Todd? Bigfoot, the hairy okay. guy. Okay. You know, so it should be next week. Well, now we have two Todds, so we have to yeah. decipher. Yeah, not not you. That's why I said your Todd. See, I'm pointing. You're pointing the wrong way. No, I'm pointing the right way, you know? No. The, to me, it's the right way. You're next to me. You're on my left. It's the wrong way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> her, not Todd. Not, her Todd. Not, not Camilla's Todd. The other Todd. No. Well, guys, we love you so much, okay. and thank you for being here again. As always, this is Dimensions of the Supernatural, not on the regular night or the regular time. Yeah, but we'll we had a good time. Yeah, we did. We will see you next week okay. on our normal Thursdays from 7.30 to 9.30. Okay. I'm Maureen Grudzinski, a little witchy, and this is Anthony Simonelli. Okay. I just got to say... Be safe out there. We want to look for ghosts. We don't want to be a ghost. I'm going to hit it. Right. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> hey. Oops, I went a second time there. Hey. How you doing? Hey. See you so, next week. Ciao. Forget about.